Well, <coughs> it's been a long week, guys. A lot of stuff going on. Today is, is it June 1st? Is that what it is? Is it already June 1st? Look at that. Um, June 1st. The reason I say it's been a long week, and it, it, it just seems like it's been longer. Because, think about this. Tonight, at, eight, at around 8.30, it'll be one week since anyone learned of the name George Floyd. It feels like it's been years. And it's, it, it's, it's an anniversary today. On this day, it's the 99th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre, or the Tulsa Race Riot. You can Google either one of them to learn about it where dozens of blacks were murdered with impunity in Greenwood, Oklahoma. The city covered up the connection to the conspiracy with white leaders for more than 70 years before a commission investigated. <clears throat> I read briefly about it. Apparently what happened was uh, an African-American shoeshine boy uh, was working, I believe it was Memorial Day, and there was a young lady working, she was a 17-year-old young lady working Memorial Day. They knew each other. History doesn't exactly know how well they knew each other. There have been stories that they had a relationship, but you know those types of relationships are not allowed. Not back in, uh, what would that be, 1921. And uh, someone heard her scream, and he was seen leaving. And nobody knows exactly what happened. Somebody, some people say that he tripped, and when he tripped, he fell on her, and that caused her to scream. Um, the white community was in an uproar. And it started, uh, there was accusations of rape and all sorts of stuff. But nothing actually happened. And this is, that's impunity. Because the uh, 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 white Americans then and still now believe that they are right, even if they're wrong. And even if they're wrong, it doesn't matter because they will be, be believed as right. <clears throat> and then the white community went through the black community and just torched it, destroyed it, uh, killing dozens of, of blacks, hospitalizing hundreds. It was a, 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 a dark night in history, very dark night in history. You would think that with this uh, well-known active and passive racism in the U.S., that the voices screaming about George Floyd would spread from coast to coast. But those waves have shown power and resilience and uh, spilled over borders. London and Trafalgar Square, Berlin, Copenhagen, Wales, Milan, the Shibuya police station in Tokyo. I don't know if I said that right. Altea Square in Auckland, New Zealand, where they called on the Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, to denounce the killing as a hate crime. Rallies were planned throughout Australia, where former Australian uh, Prime Minister Malcolm uh, Turnbull weighed in, telling uh, a, a, at a video con conference that Donald Trump was a deliberate, divisive leader seeking to exploit division. He said, far from making America great again, 
He makes America weaker. Donald Trump makes America weaker. A piece of the former Berlin Wall now carries the graffiti, I can't breathe. After scoring a goal in a match in Germany, English footballer Jaden Sancho, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, lifted his jersey revealing a handwritten message, justice for George Floyd. French national Marcus Thuram kneeled for five seconds after scoring in Borussia. Borussia. I hope I said that right. Um, and we know what taking the knee was. Chinese officials and state media, and this is kind of funny, likened the unrest to the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong and accused Washington of hypocrisy. It didn't end there. Iran's foreign ministry spokesman, Abbas Mosavi, urged the U.S. government and police to stop violence <clears throat> against your people and let them breathe. While the Russian foreign ministry said the U.S. had a systemic, had systemic problems in the human rights sphere. And they're not wrong. But when human rights violators themselves call you out for human rights violations, you've lost the argument. Donald Trump, that message was for you. How can we fix the world if we can't fix ourselves? I remember as a child, thinking of the human rights movement way back when I was a child, and I'm a lot older than most. Way back then, I was thinking as a child, by the time I'm an adult, this should be fixed. And then as a young adult, I said, well, it's taking longer than I thought. I don't know why, but by the time I'm in my 40s, it should certainly be fixed. And in my 40s, I said, well, certainly by the time I'm retired, it should be fixed. It's getting close. It's still not fixed. And yes, as I've said before, the police department are horrible to everyone. But blacks are, and I, uh, this is what I was uh, told by the report, or what I gathered from the report, unarmed blacks are five times more likely to be killed by police than anyone else. I heard on the news this morning that it was two and a half times. I'm not sure who's right. I'd have to read the uh, report in depth to see who's right. But either one is unacceptable. Nothing like this is acceptable. Not to me. And I've told you before, I'm not African American. I can't claim I know what's going on. But I knew I, I know what's going on with me. And one, what's going on with me is horrible. And if for blacks it's five times worse, I can't live with that. I cannot live with that. Something needs to be done. It's systemic. From the police academies to the street. Who are we hiring? Why are we not checking their backgrounds when we hire them? Are they racist when they join? Do they join because they're racist? Do they learn racism on the job? Do good people not want to join the force because they don't want to be seen as racist? 
President set, uh, Obama set out to learn this and, and uh, many other things and to help our police forces. That's what he was planning on doing. He, char he started all these programs that were helping police departments and police departments were like, this is great. We're learning. We're changing things. And as soon as that racist Donald Trump got into office, those programs were ended. No more. No more. We must do more. We must hold our police department's feet to the fire. They must do what's needed to end the hate embedded in the departments across the country. Let's start by changing their directive. They aren't supposed to be crime fighters. They're supposed to be citizen defenders, victim protectors. Crime fighting is only a part of their job. If there is no victim to protect, if there's no citizen to defend, should, you, should they be doing what they're doing? Many of these incidents of hate crimes against citizens by police happen because the state decides it needs to pull somebody over for a broken taillight or any reason they can think of. I was pulled over for a loud exhaust and the cops refused to give me their badge and information so I could complain about it in Burbank. I was pulled over with guns drawn in Hollywood because my tag had expired. Honestly, I didn't even notice it. I had forgotten all about it. I was also pulled over in Hollywood. And when I argued with the cop about him not having a justifiable reason to pull me over, he said, I can give you a ticket for anything I want. And they'll believe me. They won't believe you. This has been going on for hundreds of years. I'm so sick and tired of it. People are people. People are human. Who cares what they look like? Who cares what their gender is? Who cares what their color is? Who cares who they love? It doesn't matter. Let people live. Let people be human. To top it off, when you're hating... When the police do something illegal like they do every single day, they're teaching others that it's okay to do it. You know, <clears throat> I do have a question for protesters, though. Are you registered to vote? I mean, this is really important. There are plenty of reasons to be out there protesting. To meet people that are like-minded. To get your voice heard. There's many legitimate reasons to be there. But if you're not registered to vote, you don't have a legitimate reason to be there. If you're an anarchist and you decide you're not to, uh, going to register to vote, you don't deserve to be there. You've given up your right to be there because you haven't had your voice heard. You haven't voted. Of course, if you're other, under 18, that's fine. Be there all you want. 
be there with your parents, be there alone. But remember why you're there. And when you turn 18, make sure that registration is in your hand, filled out while you're walking to the mailbox. <clears throat> Trump, oh gosh, he's just, he's out of control. Trump said, and it's funny where he said it, Liberal governors and mayors must get much tougher or the federal government will step in and do what has to be done. And that includes using the unlimited power of our military and many arrests. He said as he was hiding in his bunker. I, I haven't... I haven't been quiet about Donald Trump needing a civics lesson. And I've spoken about Posse Comitatus before. The military is not allowed on our, in our country, within our country, to make arrests, to carry firearms. They can't do anything. They can only do supportive stuff. Our military, they can only do, like, like when the hospital ship was in Los Angeles. The military hospital ship was in Los Angeles. Or I, there's any number of reasons to help people. But to arrest people, to restore order, absolutely not. Violation of the Constitution, violation of posse comitatus, you may not have the military. You are not in charge, Mr. Trump. That's what the National Guard is for. And you are not in charge of the National Guard. Absolutely not. Each governor is in charge of the National, of the National Guard. You have no power here. Just sit in your bunker and whimper that black people are sharing their voice. Whimper that whites are losing power. You pussy. <sighs> it's not just Trump. It's the people he hires. The very white White House National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien <laughs> said there's no such thing as systemic racism. He literally said that yesterday or this weekend. I don't know. I think somebody tried to get him to expand on that on Sunday. <laughs> there's no systemic racism. That's what he said. That's, that's pretty insane. Recently, I, I, I've been watching the only black Republican senator, Tim Scott, get interviewed. He said he spoke with the president over the weekend. You can't help but believe that the president's rhetoric changes when he's in this position, when he has a, uh, a black Republican senator, the only black Republican senator, in front of him. His, he has to change how he is. He, can't, he has to watch his wording. He can't say, um, he, he, he can't say his, his black jokes that he would normally say. He can't be racist like he is normally. He has to use measured words. It's got to be hilarious to see him in a room with that senator. We should have a president whose rhetoric, rhetoric doesn't need to change for each situation. We should have a president who is the same no matter who he's talking with, no matter who he's speaking with. In speeches, his voice should be the same. It should be unchanged. He shouldn't, a president shouldn't have to guard what he says for fear that people will see him as racist. We should have a non-racist president. That would fix that. 
but we don't. Let's get let's have a thought experiment. If Republican Senator African American Tim Scott were running for the presidency against the extremely white Joe Biden, you know, so we're saying if Donald Trump wasn't running, if it was Tim Scott, the Republican senator, running against Joe Biden right now, who do you think the Republicans would vote for? Do you think the Republicans would vote for African-American Republican senator Tim Scott? Or do you think they would vote for Joe Biden? I want you to think about that. So, yesterday, I was reminded of Reginald Denny. Now, most of you probably don't know who Reginald Denny was. Uh, 28 years ago, I guess, the 1992 riots. For the same reason. Every 28 years, we seem to have riots for the same reason. Before that, it was 1965, the Watts riots. The Watts riots, then the 1992 riots, then today's riots. So in, uh, <clears throat> during the 1992 riots, Mr. Denny was a truck driver who was, he was just on delivery. Antoine Miller climbed up to his cab and an unidentified man pulled Mr. Denny from the cab and he was nearly beaten to death by at least four black men. Six were eventually implicated. Henry Watson, Anthony Brown, Antoine Miller, Lance Parker, Damian Williams, and Gary Williams were all implicated in this beating. And Reginald Denny never fully recovered. I mean, this was a horrible beating. Caught on video. I was watching the news yesterday and, and saw a woman pulled from her Amazon delivery van, and that's when Reginald Denny entered my mind. She was thrown to the ground while uh, the men raided the back of her van and stole packages out of it, out of her Amazon van. And I was riveted. I, w I, I, I had so much fear that this woman would get beaten. This is the hate that the police started. They started it. And the people are backed into the corner. And they feel like there's nothing left to do. They have to lash out. They can't. They cannot reach the perpetrator because the perpetrator is sy systemic racism at the police department. You can't beat an idea. You can't fight back against an idea. You can only change the idea. And people are tired. I am so tired. I'm so tired of not being able to change things. My entire life I've spent talking to congressmen, talking to uh, 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 city councilmen, their office, their offices, my Senate, my senators, uh, every representative I can think of, my assembly person. I've been, I've been talking to all these people. We've got to change things. And things aren't changing. Every time I say, oh, finally, finally, something is going to change. Every time I say that, it doesn't happen. 
<sighs> I was worried about that woman in the Amazon van. It's not her fault. She wasn't the one who did it. Then, in Minneapolis, a tanker truck barreled down the highway, plowing through protesters. Fortunately, no protesters were hurt. He was pulled from his truck and beaten, and he ended up in the hospital, but he's under arrest. He should not have been plowing his truck through protesters. Impunity is the word of the day. Learn it, understand it. Police act with impunity. White people, at times, like that woman in Central Park, act with impunity. Police believe it's okay to murder citizens because they're acting with impunity. In New York, Officers use their police cruisers to ram protesters because they can act with impunity. They know that the investigation will be on their side. The commissioner, NYPD police commissioner, said the NYPD is a majority-minority department of those cruisers that plowed through protesters. We are a minority, I'm sorry, a majority minority department, meaning that there's more minority police officers than there are uh, majority race. But he didn't mention that at the top, most are white, including the internal affairs deputy chief who would be in charge of looking into incidents like this. I, 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 couldn't get, I couldn't see all the pictures of everybody who was at the top in the police force in New York City. But I could only find one African American that was at the top. The rest were white. The chief is white. The commissioner is white. The deputy chief, African American. Everybody else that I could find pictures of was white. So, when the um, police commissioner for NYPD says that they are a majority, minority department, he isn't exactly being truthful. He really isn't. But I'll say, there has been some light. Police officers taking a knee with the protesters police officers, and police captains joining marches. Let's make this a parade. That was beautiful. <sighs> when am I going to be able to go through a day and not think about this? When will it happen? It likely won't happen in my lifetime. And I'm sorry, I won't see it. The only other news of the day yesterday is the SpaceX capsule connected to the space station yesterday, ending the U.S.'s many-year drought of launching astronauts into space. This is a beginning. I'm just sorry it had to happen under Trump's watch. Such a, uh, a leap forward in history shouldn't be witnessed by this administration. They shouldn't be allowed to use it when they continue the hate. They continue to threaten the citizens of the United States with military action, which is against the Constitution. They continue to remove programs to help police stations, 
learn to get rid of hate and racism in their departments. They've removed all programs. They remove programs for anything that can help the people. The only thing they want, the only thing Republicans want, is to help corporations. And they're not shy about it. It's time for some change. If you were out protesting yesterday, and you are 17 and a half, and you are not registered, go home. We don't want you. Here's hoping for change. June 1st, 2020, I'm Peter Lawrence, reporting from Los Angeles.